But good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to this fourth Sunday of Lent, those gathered in person and those joining online. Uh, my name is Stephen Blackmore, and I welcome you from Church of the Resurrection in Hamilton, Ontario. We continue with our Lenten journey, and uh, it's hard to believe that we're actually the fourth Sunday of Lent already, and Holy Week is just around the corner. And so I do want to make you aware of special Holy Week services this year, and this will go out in all our communication platforms uh, this week, so uh, don't feel you need to scramble to write everything down, but uh, we will be uh, gathering on Monday, Thursday for a 7 p.m. worship, Good Friday at 10 a.m., Easter Vigil on Holy Saturday at 7 p.m., and Easter morning we'll be bringing back our 8.30 service, so we'll be having a services at 8.30 and 10.30, so we'll need to make that little shift as, uh, as we look to re-engage some of our 8.30 folks as well in time for Easter. And we're also making some plans for children's programming to be available uh, beginning Palm Sunday. So stay tuned for more details as to what that will look like. And our hope also is to, to resume a version of our coffee hour following the 1030 service on the Sunday following Easter, which is April 24th. So all this will go out in the e-blast this week. And uh, uh, spread the word, please, with others as, uh, as you're able uh, so that we can uh, look to... Uh, re-engage each other and build, rebuild our community here at Church of the Resurrection. Our new protocols are in place for today. As you noticed, we didn't have to take attendance uh, on your way in. Uh, we do ask that people uh, remain with their be masked through the duration of the service. The only exceptions now allowed are for those who have speaking parts. If they feel comfortable, they can take off their masks for the readings, the intercessions, and the homilies, but the rest of the time we'll all be masked. And then at communion, you'll be directed again, a single file down the center uh, aisle, and you can receive bread either from myself uh, or Reverend Leon. And if you take the bread and then return to your pew uh, to lift your mask and to receive it, we find that's often the simplest and safest way to do that. Okay, I think that's enough commercials for today. Uh, but again, do stay tuned for all our, these communications going out this week. As we begin our time of worship together today, we take a few moments to acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties and directly adjacent to Haldimand Treaty Territory. We seek a new relationship with the original peoples of this land, one based in honor and deep respect. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. Let us stand for opening him. Grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Father and Mother, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. We pray together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's holy word. A reading from the book of Joshua. Today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you, so the place has been called Gilgal to this day. 
On the evening of the 14th day of the month, while camped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, the Israelites celebrated the Passover. The day after the Passover, that very day, they ate some of the produce of the land, unleavened bread and roasted grain. The manna stopped the day after. They ate this food from the land. There was no longer any manna for the Israelites, but that year they ate the produce of Canaan. Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword. And Joshua went up to him and asked, uh, are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, what message does my Lord have for his servant? The word of the Lord, the word of wisdom. Thanks be to God. be with you and also with you hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke glory to you Lord Jesus Christ now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming there to listen to him and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying this fellow welcomes sinners and eat with them so he told them this parable there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout the country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to the field to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the paws the, fit the pigs were eating, so no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough to spare? But here I am, dying in hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of the hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But, but while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and get the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to celebrate. Now this elder son was in the field and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the Vatican because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he began angry 
and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, listen, for all these years, I have been working like a slave for you. And I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when his son, but when the son of yours came back, who had devoured your property, you killed the fatty calf for, for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O Lord, speak to us a fresh word of your love. Open our hearts to receive it. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. When I was about nine years old, I would walk home from school with a neighbor friend. And one day we decided we'd take the scenic way home. And so we went down different streets on the way to his house, playing on every snow-filled hill, sometimes getting stuck in the deeper parts, much to our delight. And we were having such a good time, we completely lost track of time. And so when we finally made it to his house, his father was beside himself with worry, for it had taken nearly two hours to make the one-kilometer walk home. My friend's father scolded his son while he got me into his car to take me home around the corner. My worried, sick mother greeted me with a mixture of relief and anger, and not a few tears were shed. I felt awful. I'd really scared her. I mean, I'd really, really scared her. And I'd never seen her so shaken, and I'd never felt so ashamed. But once emotions cooled down, she came to me in my room and explained to me how worried she'd been, and that she was only upset with me because she loved me so much, and she was afraid that something terrible had happened to me. And that moment always stuck with me. And I never wanted to disappoint or scare her like that again. Now a parent myself, I know that there is no greater fear for a parent than the fear of losing a child. Perhaps that's why Jesus closes his powerful parable teachings in Luke 15 with the parable of the lost son. It is the third story found in Luke 15 that deals with what was lost being found. First, he tells the story of the lost sheep who was pursued by the shepherd, leaving the 99 behind in order to find this one lost sheep and tenderly carry it home. And then he tells the story of a woman who had lost one of her precious 10 coins, and she searched every corner of her home until finding it. And now today we read one of Jesus' most famous of parables, the parable of the lost son. Many people know it as the parable of the prodigal son, for its depiction of the younger son as being an impetuous, disrespectful son who chooses to spend his wealth on dissolute living, the scriptures say. Now the term prodigal simply refers to inappropriate or undisciplined habits, though his brother did accuse him of spending it on prostitutes. The details of how he squandered his money are not important, but what is pertinent is how his actions brought shame to his family, severed his relationship with his father. For in Jesus' culture, to ask a living parent for an early inheritance 
is a lot like saying, I wish you were dead. And children who make a request like this lose their respect and honor in their community. Their community even ostracizes them. And parents would usually respond to such a request with anger, a waving of the arms and hands to be done with this ungrateful child. And ties between parents and children would be cut completely. Now to make matters worse for the son in our story, he takes what is given and he squanders it. And he is left desperate for even the most meager morsels of food. We find out that he has no resort but to hire himself out as a hired hand where his task is to feed the pigs. And remember, this is a Jewish audience and presumably a story about a Jewish family. So for the son to end up with the pigs punctuates his desperate situation as it is the most shameful place a Jew could find himself. But here at rock bottom, the story goes on. And it says the son comes to himself. He has a realization, a little epiphany, if you would. He realizes the depravity of his situation, and there's even just a morsel of hope for something better in his father's service. And so the story quickly shifts from the son to the father as the key actor. For we find that he sees his lost son from a distance. Presumably, he's been waiting and looking for him. And he sees the son while he is still far off. And the story says he runs to him. One biblical scholar notes this striking detail, and I quote, In a culture where senior figures are far too dignified to run anywhere, this man takes to his heels as soon as he sees his young son dragging himself home. This loving father is overjoyed at the sight of his son. And before the son could even utter a word, he embraces and kisses him. The son apologizes for his behavior, and I'm sure not a few tears were shed. And the father calls for the best clothing and the best food and initiates a magnificent celebration. We cannot overemphasize how countercultural the father's reaction was to his son. In his culture, unsuccessful people are not celebrated. And certainly someone who has cut all ties with family would not be so easily forgiven. Indeed, the elder brother's reaction is more typical than his father's. He mutters and complains about the injustice of his foolish sibling receiving favorable treatment. He has remained loyal to his father and cannot fathom the grace and generosity being wasted on his brother. Ironically, his bitterness and resentment now make him the lost son. For he refuses to participate in the celebrations, placing himself on the outside looking in at the party. Cue the father's relentless love once again. I quote, perhaps the most poignant movement of the father in the story is in relation to this good older son. For when the son refuses to enter the celebration, the father takes the initiative to find him and plead with him. When the son makes his case, the father does not disagree or belittle. He restates his own recognition, but with these words of introduction, son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. The generosity lavished on the son who was lost outside the household is now extended also to the son who was lost within the household. The father's love knows no limitations. Jesus offers this parable as a response to the religiously faithful who have been complaining about his eating and drinking with outcasts and sinners. The implication is obvious that they, like the, old, like the elder brother, remaining faithful to God, but they are unable to comprehend how God can extend such grace and hospitality to those outside the fold. 
For you see, God offers a banquet feast to all who would come to him. He's throwing a party, and both sons are invited, sinners and righteous alike, the grateful and the hard-hearted. The story ought to speak to us this morning, for it is never out of season to hear a fresh word about God's unconditional love for us. The desert of Lent, the anxiety-inducing pandemic, the overwhelming challenges life can present to us heighten the need for us to hear that we are valued, accepted for who we are, and deeply cherished. We might relate to the young son in the story, overwhelmed by the consequences of poor decisions we've made, feeling guilty over lapses in character, pushed to the brink of despair. Or perhaps your struggles are not your fault, but you still know what it's like to push and push and push and try to get yourself out of the pit, but to no avail. Do you think you are beyond saving or beyond grace? Or do you think you are invisible to the loving gaze of your Heavenly Father? Or maybe you are like the elder son, remaining faithful to God and family, yet your efforts seem to be getting you no further ahead. Others are seemingly rewarded while your hard work goes unappreciated. You may feel undervalued and desperately long for a word of approval, for someone to see and appreciate you. Have you perhaps gotten too busy for your own good? Can you not see that God is not far off, but will only come to enjoy God's presence when you learn to let go of bitterness and resentment? Or finally, you may feel like the father in the parable story today, desperately longing for reconciliation with a loved one, willing to forgive and ready to celebrate new life together, and you're waiting at the window for a glimpse of the wandering child to return. Well, wherever you are in your spiritual journey, today know that God sees you and cherishes you and appreciates you. There is nothing you can do to separate you from God's love. Today we may be invited to, to come to ourselves in this moment, to realize our great need for God. We might call this repentance, for it is a reorienting of our thinking, our feeling, and our acting towards God. But we might also think of it as simply the need to take a step in the journey, a step of faith, which may be reflected in a prayer said today, or maybe in a song sung, to make those words your own. Or perhaps when you take the step out of your pew to come to take communion today, can this be your way of returning to the Father anew? Whatever that step looks like for you, I'd encourage you to take a step of faith forward and let the Holy Spirit tune your heart to God's grace and mercy, for God's love knows no bounds. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. continue our worship with our prayers. In this holy Lenten season, let us turn to God in prayer, saying, God of love, hear our prayer. For the holy people of God everywhere, that we may embrace the message of the cross and become ministers of reconciliation, advocates of peace, and agents of healing in a broken world, praying especially for the Ukraine. God of love, Hear our prayer. 
for this nation of Canada and all nations, that we may generously share the produce of our land, both in plenty and in want. God of love, hear our prayer. For the alienated and rejected ones of this world, that all may come to know God's welcome to sit down at table. God of love, hear our prayer. For this community, that we may learn from God to seek the lost and the lonely and to rejoice and aid them whenever and wherever they are found. God of love, hear our prayer. For our own needs and those of others known to us, that God may be the hope and the consolation to us all. God of love, hear our prayer. For those who have asked for our prayers and those who need them, we pray for Marilyn H., Frank, Fred, John and Sylvia, Norma, Dolores, Hazel, Molly, Gloria, Charlotte, Elsie, Faye, Joan and David, Janet, Diane R., Mabel, Wayne, Gary, Norma, Harry, Steve, Karen, Marlene, and the Kinch family, Wyatt, Lise, and Martin, Phyllis C., Susan T., Bibi, Edna, Gord, Ian, Josh, Victor, Rebecca, Rachel Ann, and Bev S., God of love, our prayer. In our church, we pray for Mary and Denton Gordon, Elsie Greenidge, and Val Gunnamon, and their families. In our Diocese of Niagara, we pray for St. George's Guelph and the interim team there, led by Canon Jean Mitchell, priest assistant, and the honorary assistants, and the people of that parish. We pray for all those who, like me, are celebrating birthdays this week. May God bless us as we celebrate and in the year ahead. God of love, hear our prayer. God of mercy and compassion, bring us back to you when we stray and give us again the joy of proclaiming among the nations your saving deeds. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue in prayer for the Ukraine. Lord Jesus, the protector of the vulnerable, stretch out your hand over the frightened people of the Ukraine. We pray for those who will be displaced and divided by violence this day. We pray for those who wait in anxiety to know their future. Gather them each to other for courage and solidarity. And just as you appeared to the disciples in the upper room, offering your deep peace as a bulwark against apprehension. We urgently ask the same gift for our Ukrainian siblings. We pray all this for their sake and in your strong name. Amen. Amen. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. Let us confess our sins, remembering before God the times when we have fallen from temptation into sin. Make our hearts clean, O God, and renew the right spirit within us. 
Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. The Lord enrich you with God's grace and nourish you with God's blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offenses for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to God's grace. We stand together. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We take a few moments to share in a sign of God's peace in a contactless manner. Let us pray. God of mercy and compassion, your word calls us home to faith and love. Accept all we offer you this day in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. God's Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now we give you thanks because you give us the spirit of discipline that we may triumph over evil and grow in grace as we prepare to celebrate the Paschal mystery with mind and heart renewed. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, Jesus had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favor on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. See what you become and become what you see. The gifts of God for you, the holy and beloved people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Giver of life, you enlighten all who come into the world. Fill our hearts with the splendor of your grace, that we may perfectly love you and worthily praise your holy name through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Together we pray, God of our pilgrimage, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May God the Father, who does not despise the broken spirit, give to you a contrite heart. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sins in his body on the tree, heal you by his wounds. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, speak to you words of pardon and peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God.